Hey yo, what is up YouTube? It is your boy Joker A50X and we are back with a new episode. Now today's episode is actually gonna be for the Frieza clan. I'm gonna just say the Frieza race, Frieza clan, whatever you want to call them, the Arcosians, Changelings, what have you. So <clears throat> now starting off, I never was a friend of Metacooler. He was like probably my least favorite movie character. No, Bio Broly had to be the worst. But after Bio Broly, I dislike Metacooler. And um overall Metacooler was he, the concept of the movie was unique, but it was just like, we already seen your brother do this. Why bring you back and do the same thing only for you to get whooped too? And it, it was it was different to see uh, Goku and Vegeta struggle the way they did. And I enjoyed that, but it, it kind of made me feel as if um, it, it just felt recycled, so to speak. Because, like I said, you had Frieza and King Cole come to Earth. They got washed by, uh, who was it, Trunks? Yeah, they got washed by Trunks. And our timeline, and the future timeline, they got washed by Goku, and so it was. It was kind of just like I honestly don't want to see these guys again. Um, I, I thought it was it was it was rather annoying the way like when they finally beat the first Metacooler body, they constantly had to fight them over and over again, like with a countless amount of clones it was just an endless amount of clones of him which I thought on his part by fusing with the big Yeti star was smarter than what Frieza did um, in a sense it gave him unlimited lives while his main body was still hooked up to the the star uh, but overall it was it was just eh. he was a very in eh character if, if I had to pick out of him and maybe like the original cooler movie I'd have to go with the original cooler movie it felt more built up you can tell there was a personality difference a major personality difference between cooler and Frieza and I mean I like the, the play on their names it's pretty freaking funny cooler Frieza yeah it's it was eh. it was eh. it was, it's it's that's how I can call it what I would have liked to see from that movie actually was um his, his body reconstructed, not in the Mecha Freezer way, but like you taking elements from his his metal form and combining it with his body that was hooked up, so that way, like, okay, he had millions on. I don't know how many clones they fought, but he had a a, a butt ton of clones. Now all these clones stacked up, going off against Goku, Vegeta. Uh, I think Pic no Piccolo didn't fight fight them. Piccolo, Gohan, and Krillin they fought like. <laughs> The, the robotic forces he had but my whole thing was what he could have did was incorporated some of the uh, the big getty star into his dna system or the, the his metal form into his actual body to make his body not only more durable but more powerful and figured out a way to make his his original body a lot more sturdy and durable so he wouldn't have to go through that again but instead he didn't and when they got to his final body it was kind of just like there really isn't much you can do cooler. You're hooked up to a machine. You're at their mercy. And you really think Goku's going to let you leave this planet? Well, you think Vegeta's going to let you leave this planet? And the, the crazy part about that is... I don't think Vegeta was in the, the cooler movie. The original cooler movie. I don't I don't think he was there. Was Vegeta in the cooler movie? No, it was Piccolo, Gohan, Krillin, and Goku. And I don't think... Yeah. Vegeta wasn't in that. So, it was interesting enough to see him in this movie helping Goku out. And it was one of the many times we had actually see them work side by side and, and collaborate as equals and, and work together to, be, to defeat a common enemy. So, I like that aspect of the movie. But overall, I, I just didn't care for Metal Cooler too much. He was very forgettable. And I like the fact they added him in other games. But. Everybody has different opinions on characters, and this just happens to be mine for Metal Cooler. Now, how is we have this? Let's see. Who shall we do? You know what? I think I'm gonna go with. Let's just go ahead and go with his final form. Now, here, here's the thing with with me on this. Now, this this 
when this form was introduced for Cooler, it was it was just like holy crap, that was mind blowing to me for the simple fact that he achieved a fifth form that Frieza couldn't. Now Frieza had four forms, uh, not including his 100% form because that's just him all beefed out. I didn't consider that a fifth form, uh, and I didn't consider the golden form a fifth form for uh, Frieza either. Either, but Cooler actually achieved another powerful transformation. Which I guess you can say put him above Frieza in the original Super Saiyan Goku, but he was still fairly. I don't. I don't want to say underplayed, but it was. I don't know. I felt like more could have been done with him. Around the ending of the movie, it seemed to rush, and something that's common amongst Frieza and his family is they all get arrogant once they see they have an upper hand and that ultimately that, that's what caused Frieza his life and that's what caused, uh, that caused Cooler his life because he got overconfident when he had the upper hand on Goku and he didn't expect Goku to push his supernova attack back and I mean he played himself. King Cole was probably the smartest one out of their clan because his idea was to blow the earth up from outer space and just peel out. I mean, literally, that would have been the smartest thing to do. They wouldn't be able, been able to get the Dragon Balls to resurrect them, and Frieza could have went back to Namek. Well, no, he couldn't have. Were the Namek still there? I don't think the Namek were still there. But I think if, if they would have went with King Cole's plan, Vegeta, I mean, not Vegeta, but the Earth ultimately would have been screwed, and they would have lost that battle. So, for me, Final Form Cooler was, he was different. And I preferred his attitude over Frieza's attitude. And that also gave us another glimpse at Bardock in that movie. So. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry guys, I got a, I got a cold. So, I didn't want to go through all of like each of their forms or whatever. Just, just two, because both of them have more than one. So next up is Frost. Now, I probably should have put Frost first because... Let's be real. I didn't, I, I, I didn't like Frost at all. I didn't care for his character. His design was just pretty much like the opposite scheme of um, Freezes, so to speak. His first form I liked, but when he got to this form, it was just like, whatever. I didn't care. And his personality, the, the whole, he's smart in the sense of fooling um, people into thinking he's a hero, when in actuality he's a villain. He, that to earn himself money and notoriety and fame as a good guy or a hero. I, I feel like he's smart in that aspect, and he's also a very cunning character. Um, during his fight against Goku, he actually, I, I guess you would say he played Goku a little bit, because when he caught Goku off guard with his attack and poisoned him, no one knew what exactly happened. We just thought Goku had lost originally. But, um, as usual, you have those fans that are very observant, and they noticed the, the little, little dot on his fist, which was um, the tool or the needle that Frost used to actually poison Goku, and later on, he tried to do the same thing to Piccolo. No, I think he did do the same thing to Piccolo. I don't remember the fight entirely, but he, he used that against Piccolo, and I just thought it was very lame. Like, you got Frieza, this powerhouse of arrogance, and... and this man was just wild, and I, but I guess it makes sense since their their universes are are opposites but parallels in a sense. So where you have a Frieza who's polite, um, arrogant, and powerful, you you could have his an alternate of him being not not weak, so to speak, but more cunning, conniving, and. Um, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Cunning, conniving, and. Huh. I can't think of another word for him. Cowardly. Because he, he got on his knees before he attacked uh, Goku. And to do that, that says a lot to get on your knees in front of your enemy to try to win a fight or save your life. It, it's, it's weak. And I'm glad that he. I think he got. What's it been straight up whooped him? I think it was Vegeta. Yeah. I think Vegeta was the one who just straight up disrespected him. And I was... I, 
I just didn't care for Frost character. I didn't, I didn't like his personality. The, the cheap antics, I wasn't a fan of it. I would have preferred a powerhouse who would have been on par with the likes of Freezer, but we didn't get that. Now, for the main man himself, Freezer. I wish King Cole was in this game. Granted, we didn't get to see a lot of tape. You know, I still kind of wish he was in <laughs> Now, firstborn Freezer, the man who extinguished the Saiyan race. Now, starting off, Freezer, when he was first introduced, he, he was just, the name struck fear into his subordinate, Lord Freezer. Like, if you got a Lord in front of your name, you know there's some power behind you. And so, off the rip, when I thought of Freezer, before I saw what he looked like, I thought he was gonna be like some monster looking big built alien kind of like Nap almost. Cause when I first saw Nap, I thought Nap was just like the pinnacle of how I thought he was a beast, but that quickly got shut down. But Frieza. Frieza is the guy who destroyed planet Vegeta with orders from Lord Beerus. Um, surprisingly enough. I don't know if they just did that to give Frieza and Beerus some kind of uh, relationship, but if that was planned from like all the way back then, it would be mind blowing to think that Toriyama thought this far ahead for a character which he usually doesn't, so I don't feel like he did. But, ah, moving back to Frieza. No, he doesn't like Frieza's character. His personality was something. It wasn't. It was, it was different from Vegeta, it was different from King Piccolo, it was different from Piccolo Jr., and it was different from Raditz. Frieza was a polite asshole. Like, he respected his opponents. I'm not gonna say respected, but when he said something to him, he spoke to him kindly. And everything he did was scream, I can destroy you if I really want to, I'm just being kind right now. And honestly, that is ultimately what cost Frieza his life. Had Frieza went to his fourth form off rip when, um, who was it? I think it was Vegeta and Gohan who got the upper hand on him. Had he went to his fourth form off rip, he would have been able to kill everybody on the planet and no one would have been able to do anything about it. No one. He, he, he toyed with them. He wanted to torture them. And that goes to, to add to his, his psychopathic nature. Frieza was a jerk. He was a straight up douchebag. He toyed with them. He crushed all of Vegeta's hopes. He crushed everything. He, he, he crushed Gohan's hope of surviving. He struck fear into Krillin. Krillin was terrible. He even impaled Krillin with his horn. And right when we thought someone had came along who would, you know, provide a, 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 a challenge in a sense for Frieza in the form of Piccolo fused with now, it was amazing to watch Piccolo go out against Frieza and actually gain an upper hand. And see, here's the problem with our characters. Piccolo probably could have defeated second form Frieza had he taken his weights off and he went 100% off the rip. They knew what kind of powerhouse Frieza was. They knew what kind of monster he was. But they didn't know he had. He, he possessed alternate forms to um, keep his power at bay, so to speak. And so, with that being said, had um, Piccolo powered all the way up completely and went all out against Frieza when he first got there, I believe that Piccolo actually stood a chance of killing Frieza right then and there and ultimately saving a lot of lives, but he didn't do that and it set us up to have probably one of the best fights in the entire Dragon Ball series, Final Form Frieza versus Goku. And so I guess you can guys can infer who's next from that. Um, now, with that being said, final form Frieza. Now, with, with, with each of Frieza's forms, his ego and his arrogance built on top of what was already manifested there. You know you're a powerful character or a powerful individual when you, when you measure your power and percentages. Frieza probably the most well-known villain in all of anime, the most famous villain in all of anime. When you think of anime, first thing comes to mind, Dragon Ball Z, when you think of a, a hero and a villain, first two people come to mind, Goku, Frieza. And there's a perfectly good reason for that. Frieza gave us 
a great, a great saga. And within that saga, we got the ultimate, I mean, probably not the ultimate transformation, but a transformation that would, would soon be used in every saga to date. Um, afterwards, we got Super Saiyan Goku. Now, Goku was the first one to become Super Saiyan, and me personally, when I was a kid, I thought Goku was going to be the only person who had that power, but little to my knowledge, um, you know, the Trunks arc was coming up, because when I was a kid, I, I watched it on Toonami, so I didn't see everything in order, so I went back and rewatched it before I had saw the Android side, and seeing them fight was just mind-blowing. It was, it was something like... People could only dream of like people want to do that. People, kids, I imagine like the, the the people who grew up on Dragon Ball Z probably like still believe somehow they can channel Ki and whatnot. Even though that's impossible, but well, nothing is impossible. But I'm pretty sure we still believe we can channel Ki and unlock our hidden potential and whatnot and turn into Super Saiyans. Even though that part's impossible, but it was it was. His, his arrogance, it grew with each of his forms, as I was saying before. Form 1, Frieza knew he was a powerhouse, and he talked down on the people who was fighting. Form 2, his arrogance showed even more the way he disrespected Vegeta and, and just straight up manhandled him. Form 3, where he actually disrespected Piccolo. He tortured Piccolo with a barrage of key blasts, and Piccolo could do absolutely nothing about it. His arrogance was through the roof, and his power was also through the roof at the time. And with that, Frieza showed that he was truly the pinnacle of power at that point in time, giving us, like I said, the most well-known villain in all of anime, Lord Frieza. Now, oh yeah, also in our Super Saiyan transformation, like I said before, that would be in literally almost every saga afterwards. Now, Frieza's going in form. I was not a fan of this form. I was not. Going in Frieza, I was not a fan of. And my reason for this is because it made absolutely no sense the amount of power he achieved once he transformed into his golden form. You're telling me that four months of training equivalent to the years that these guys had stacked on from battling enemies such as Cell, Majin Buu and um, and the androids, all of the training they went through, all the power they had gained, literally meant nothing if Frieza just went and trained for four months. Nothing at all. Not even his god, Goku's god form. It meant nothing because Frieza decided, okay, I'm back alive, I'm gonna train for four months, and then I'll battle these guys. It just didn't make sense to me, and it bothered me. Like, mentally, I guess you can say. First, my perspective on, like, Frieza as a character. I was hyped for the movie, but it just, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like the Golden Form. It, I understand what the, the concept behind the Golden Form was. Oh, I lost to a Golden Monkey. I want to become Golden and seek my revenge. He shall lose to the form that he defeated me in. I, I get it. This is cool and all. But what, what killed it for me was, why not give us a character we haven't seen before in a movie and make him a new character that maybe they couldn't be, and it, it, it extends the story, so to speak. Um, I honestly felt like the future trunk art, the future Trunks art in Dragon Ball Super could have actually been made into a movie and led into the series versus another movie about Frieza. But that's just my thoughts on it now. You guys tell me what you think. If you enjoyed the video and the idea of it, be sure to hit the like button, comment, tell me what you think, and tell me out of the Frieza clan or the Frieza race, who is your favorite character and why. And again, mine's probably was cooler final form out of everybody. But that's just me. But as always, it was your boy Joe K5OX, and we are out to the next one. Peace.